Hi, thank you for coming to my talk. I'm Yipin Lim from Colorado Boulder. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about the charge density waves on the hexagonal lattices. I will focus on the Van Hoff singularity, where these states can realize a host of unconventional phenomena, including the Hode model phases, the higher order topology, and I will also discuss the realization in the Kagami metals. The content of this talk is based on two of our papers. One of them was done with Professor Rahul Nikishur at Colorado Boulder. Let me begin with an introduction to the systems in our analysis. The hexagonal lattices we consider include the triangular, honeycomb, and Kagami lattices. For the triangular lattice, there is a single dispersive band. For the honeycomb and Kagami lattices, there are two dispersive bands. We focus on a particular point on a dispersive band, where the cell points occur at the edge center endpoints of the Brillouin zone. The fermiology at this point is universal on the, hex on the three hexagonal lattices. We see a hexagonal Fermi surface inscribed in the Brillouin zone where the corners are the cell points at the edge center endpoints. The cell points can contribute singular density of states with log divergence, known as the Van Hoff singularity. Meanwhile, the parallel Fermi lines can contribute to the strong Fermi surface nesting at three nesting momenta Q1, Q2, and Q3. Combining these singular structures, various types of instabilities can occur. Here we focus on the charge density waves, where density modulations occur from the finite particle hole condensate at nesting momenta. If the order is real, we will have side or bound density modulations. If it is imaginary, we will have current density modulations, which are the stagger currents in real space. An interesting point is that um, at the end point, the nesting momenta are commensurate and are half of the reciprocal lattice vector. It means that we will have two by two enlarged unit cell in real space. And it is accompanied by the half by half reduced Brillouin zone in momentum space. The high symmetry points are now the gamma and M prime points and also the K prime points. We want to analyze the interplay between the real and imaginary orders. This brings us to the complex orders. We did a Ginsburg-Landau analysis, and it told us that the ground states should be the three Q orders, where simultaneous ordering occurs at the three nesting momentum. And because we're considering the complex orders, we will have an additional phase factor. The Ginsburg-Landau analysis also tells us that um, there is a total phase condition. That means we have the summation of the three phases being quantized. We can choose two of the phases to be the tunable parameter and map out the phase diagram. And the computation of the trend number gives us a rich phase diagram like, like this. Interestingly, we have the trivial insulator and the trend insulators, which are the continuous deformations from the purely real and imaginary orders. Between the gap phases, we also have the gapless phase boundaries. If we look at the particular points where an effective time reversal symmetry occurs under the one side translation, for example, if we do a time reversal to reverse the current and move it upwards to restore the original pattern, we will have a direct semi metal. A pair of direct points can occur at the end point, at the end prime points, which are the edge centers of the reduced Brillouin zone. If we move away from these symmetric points along the phase boundary, we will have a single direct point semi-metals where there is only one direct point at one end prime point. It is interesting that we can realize such whole model phase diagram in the complex charge sensor waves. The next question is whether we can find it in the practical materials. This question may be answered by looking at a recently uncovered Kagami metals, AV3SB5. Here, the Euclid atoms realize a triangular layer, the antimony atoms realize the honeycomb layer, 
and the vanadium atoms realize a Kagami layer. The band structures have been obtained by the RPES and the DFT computations. Interestingly, there is a hexagonal Fermi surface, which realize, which ar arise from the vanadium Kagami layers. If we go below a critical temperature between 80 to 110 Kelvin, the experiments found that there are density modulations at three different momenta. And these three momenta are precisely the nesting momenta of the hexagonal Fermi surface. A remarkable point is that the height, the height of the peaks at the three momenta are different. And the question is how do we explain this kind of difference? Based on our theoretical model, we propose that the unequal real order magnitudes at the three momenta can it be explained by having unequal phases at the three orders in the three Q complex orders. If we choose the phases according to the height of the peaks, we found that the ground state actually occurred in the train insulator phase. And this naturally explains why the experiments measure the anomalous hole effect. We also map out the real space pattern where we can see a star of David pattern from, in, from the strong bond stars. If we match the unicell to the il illustration in the experiment, we found that um, they match actually quite well. So our theoretical model indeed provide the transparent interpretation to the experimental results. We have found a Hoden model phase diagram and provided indications to the Kagami metal experiment. Is this the end of the stories? Actually, it may not be. We know that in addition to the train insulator scenario, the crystalline symmetries can also give us non-trivial phases, even if the original um, phases are trivial insulators. So let us focus on the corners of the phase diagram where the real orders resume the C6 rotation symmetry. Particularly, let us focus on the charge bound orders at the three nesting momenta. As we can see from the real space pattern, the warm and cold colors indicate the strong and weak bonds. Is this state really trivial? To see this, let us compute the energy spectra on the finite hexagon, and we define the bulk gap opening at the um, positive order. It was proposed that the state should be a trivial insulator, so there should be no in-gap states in the bulk gap. However, from the energy spectra, we see that there are low energy eigenstates, which presumably occur from the boundaries. A particular branch of the low energy eigenstates occur at nearly zero energy. These states almost overlap with the red um, dash line Fermi level, so we may not be able to see it here. We map out the real space pattern of these states, and we found that the wave functions are well localized at the corners, so these are the in gap corner states. How to understand these states? We can look at the unit scales of the 3Q charge bond order. If we focus on a particular point of delta equaling one, the six exterior points are decoupled from the interior hexagon. The interior hexagon forms a trivial insulator where the vernier center sits at the unicell center. However, the six exterior points form the obstructed atomic insulator where the vernier centers are shifted to the unicell corners plus minus B. Under C6 symmetry, the shifted vernier centers may lead to the charge imbalance between the electronic and the ionic charges, and this induces the feeling anomaly at the corners. Under this corner feeling anomaly, the fractional corner charges can arise and be carried by in gap corner states. Such corner phenomena are the strong evidence of the higher order topological insulators. In summary, we have found a rich phenomena in the charge density waves at Van Hoff singularity on the hexagonal lattices. Given the whole model phase diagram and the higher order topological insulator, we expect more to be explored in the charge density waves. This is the end of my talk, and thank you for your listening.